Hello, and welcome back to Kim Reads as we continue with Pinocchio. Chapter 7 Fox and Cat in the Field of Wonders. Oh, how the vain Pinocchio cried over, over that endless nose. But sh Fairy showed no pity. After all, she thought he had to learn that lies had consequences. In the end, however, she felt sorry for him and, some, and summoned several thousand woodpeckers. They flew in the window and packed all the extra nose length away. Oh, Fairy, Pinocchio said, I would like to stay here and live with you forever. I would like that too, Fairy said. We could be brother and sister. But what about my father? Pinocchio asked. I already thought of that, Fairy replied. I sent for your father. He's on his way now. Pinocchio was so happy he couldn't wait. He wanted to meet his father halfway, so he left Fairy's house and set out for the woods. Under the big oak where he had been hung, he heard a rustle in the bushes and was surprised to see Fox and Cat. There are you, dear, cried Fox, hugging him. We've missed you. Where have you been and what have you has happened since we've last seen you? asked Cat. It's a long story, Pinocchio said, and told them about the muggers. Rascals! exclaimed Fox. Of the worst kind, added Cat. Pinocchio noticed that Cat's paw was wrapped in a bandage, but when he asked just about it, Cat looked nervously away. Fox Jones Jam and explained that upon meeting the starving wolf on the road, generous Cat had nibbled off a piece of his own paw and had given it to the hungry beast. Ugh. Kind Cat, Pinocchio said, wiping away a tear. So, where are your gold pieces? Cat asked casually. Oh, I still have them in my pocket, except for the one I spent at the Inn of the Red Shrimp. Wonderful, Fox and Cat cried. Let's go to the Field of Wonders, where you can bury them and turn four gold coins into two thousand. It's impossible for me to go today. I am waiting for... I am meeting my father. I'll go with you some other time. Another day may be too late, said Fox. The field closes tomorrow. Oh. Pinocchio said, frowning. I really shouldn't, but then, like all little boys with big hearts and small brains, he he hesitated and asked, Well, is it very far? And so it was settled. Off the trio went, walking until they came to the city of the simpletons. What a strange place the city was. It was filled with pathetic creatures, hungry and hairless dogs, featherless chickens begging for grains of wheat and large butterflies and peacocks who were missing their colorful wings and tails because they had sold them. Every once in a while, an elegant coach passed through the door in pathetic crowd. In it rode either a fox or a hawk or a vulture, all of whom looked very healthy and wealthy. Finally, the trio arrived at the field. Fox instructed Pinocchio to dig a hole, plant the gold pieces, and sprinkle the earth and water with salt. Pinocchio obeyed. What now? Pinocchio asked. Go for a walk, Fox said. Come back in 20 minutes and you will find gold tree with 2,000 gold pieces as flowers. I can't wait, Pinocchio cried. Those 20 minutes were the longest of Pinocchio's life. Finally, they were older and he ran back to the field of wonders. Greedily, he managed that he could find even more than 2,000 pieces he had been promised. He, had, he would find four, eight, or even 16,000 pieces of the things he could buy, like a palace and a thousand wooden pennies and an endless supply of candy and cream puffs. When he got to the fair, there were no magical golden trees. Finding the place where he had dug a hole and buried the gold pieces, Pinocchio only saw some freshly moved soil. Reaching up to scratch his head, he heard laughter behind him. It was a large pear in a nearby tree, and it was wiggling. What's so funny? Pinocchio asked the bird angrily. It's funny how easily some silly little simpletons will allow themselves to be fooled, Parrot said. Did you really think you would grow gold coins as if they were beans or squash seeds? I did, Pinocchio confessed. The puppet trembled as the parrot described how fox and cat had returned, dug up the very pieces, and ran away. Pinocchio couldn't believe it. He had to see for himself. Reaching down, he began to dig. Surely his gold pieces would still be there. He dug a bigger hole than before, but there was nothing. Parrot was telling the truth. I fell for that lie once too, Parrot said, and I am very sorry for it. 
I realized too late that the only way to get rich is to work for it, honestly, with her hands or her brain. Desperate, Pinocchio ran to the courthouse in town to report the robbery. The judge was a wise old monkey who wore gold rimmed glasses. He listened to Pinocchio's story very carefully, and when the pup was done, he reached out and rang a bell. Pinocchio was pleased, thinking he was about to receive justice. Perhaps those two rascals had been already been caught. Instead, however, two large uniformed dogs appeared. As the judge's orders, they dragged Pinocchio off jail for the crime of being a simpleton. For four long months, he sat in jail. That's a bit harsh. Ugh. Then one day, the town had a celebration. The mayor ordered fireworks, circus acts, and best of all, the opening of the prison doors. Pinocchio's luck seemed to change. Open this door, he cried. Um, the jailer explained that only the prison doors of thieves and rascals were to be open, but not those of simpletons. But I am a thief and a rascal, not a simpleton, Pinocchio cried. Oh, the jailer replied. Well, in that case, you are also free. Good day and good luck to you, sir. If only it was that easy in real life. He opened the door and Pinocchio ran out and ran away. Oh, how happy the newly freed puppet was. As fast as he could, he ran from the prison back to Fairy's house. He hoped Fairy and Father would forgive him. He wanted to reach Fairy's house before dark, but he was so terribly hungry that he stopped for a second to pick some grapes in a nearby field. That was a big mistake. As soon as he reached out for a piece of fruit, something snapped on his leg. It was a trap set by a farmer to catch the weasels who came every so often to steal his chickens. Okay, that's the end of that chapter. I'll see you next time.